Just ahead on City Scene News, Lakewood's newest sustainable neighborhood, Lakewood volunteers are honored. And Tarumo BCT's president and CEO is named Businessman of the Year. City Scene News starts now. Hello, I'm Jonathan Kirsch with the latest Lakewood news and events. The May 12th City Council meeting began with a proclamation declaring May 17th as Norway for a day to honor the 200th anniversary of the signing of the Norwegian Constitution. The proclamation also recognized the 40th anniversary of the Sons of Norway Lodge in Lakewood and the community service work it performs. Another proclamation declared May as Mental Health Month. Mental health is the leading disability in Colorado, and it recognizes that the community health system, including the Jefferson Center for Mental Health, is working to create better results for patients and reduce health care costs. In other council news, Police Chief Kevin Paletta presented a citation for meritorious service to Lastly Elementary School student Stuart Eddie Miller Jr., who was honored for saving teacher Nancy Heck from being hit by a car after she slipped and fell on the ice in the school parking lot. Council approved a resolution confirming the city's commitment to encourage healthy opportunities and choices for our residents as part of the Live Well Colorado Healthy Eating Active Living Campaign. Council also passed an 18-month moratorium on internet sweepstakes cafes. The moratorium will not allow these businesses to open in Lakewood until after the Attorney General's Office, the State Gaming Commission, or even a new state law determines whether these businesses involve illegal gambling. The moratorium also allows Lakewood to consider local regulations of these businesses once the state makes its determination. To watch the May 12th City Council meeting online, visit lakewood.org forward slash council videos. Southern Gables neighborhood just received certification as the city's newest sustainable neighborhood. The Sustainable Neighborhoods program gives residents the opportunity to become active partners in making their city a sustainable community. Neighborhoods participating in the program work towards certification using guidance from Lakewood staff to organize workshops, projects, and events that enhance the livability of their neighborhoods and reduce residents' ecological footprint. Southern Gables earned their certification by starting a water-wise program to replace high water use landscaping in yards, creating a waste reduction, composting, and recycling effort, providing workshops for residents on reducing energy use at home, and conducting home energy audits along with several other projects. To get started and make your neighborhood part of the Sustainable Neighborhoods program, visit liquid.org forward slash green neighborhoods or sustainableneighborhoodnetwork.org. The Lakewood Police Department is participating in the statewide Click It or Ticket campaign through May 25th to make sure drivers and passengers buckle up with their seatbelts. Seatbelts help reduce traffic deaths and injuries, and state law requires that occupants in a car, particularly children, are buckled up in seatbelts. One of the goals of Foothills Animal Shelter is to find forever homes for the more than 9,000 animals it takes in every year. And over the next few months, if they find more homes, they have a chance of getting more money to find forever homes for the rest of the animals. And joining me now is Jennifer Strickland from Foothills Animal Shelter to tell us more. Thanks for joining us, Jennifer. Thanks for having us. Before we get to uh, th this contest that, uh, that you guys are involved in, mm -hmm. tell us about uh, your friend that you have here. So this is Little Man, and as you said, we take in about 9,000 animals a year. And as you can imagine, out of all those animals, not all of them are ready to go up for adoption. So he came to us in April, and he was too little to go up for adoption. So he went into one of our loving foster homes and um, is now old enough to go up for adoption, and he's ready to go. And he seems ready to play with pretty much anything. <laughs> he is. This is his favorite toy, the purple cow. They're best friends. And um, it's cool because in foster care, he was able to be exposed to other cats, mm -hmm. kids, and dogs. Oh, that's great. Yeah. Great. So tell us about this uh, this contest that Foothills is uh is involved in? We are so lucky. We're, we're one of 50 shelters that have been chosen nationally to participate in the ASPCA Rachel Ray $100,000 Challenge. So basically what that means is that we are going to be looking at saving even more lives than we ever have before, specifically looking at June, July, and August. So they compare our um, numbers that we adopted out from last year to this year. So it forces shelters to really look at even more creative ways to get the word out, to adopt, and um, to take advantage of all the services that we provide to help support these little guys. And how many animals did you adopt out 
in June, July of August of last year? Um, almost 1,700 animals. So, you know, and we save a lot of animals every year and that increases. And so for us, we feel like we're already at such a high level, you know, but still it's gonna push us to just think outside the box. We're gonna be looking at a fun summer campaign of Find Your Soulmate. So we're gonna do a spoof off of Match.com and eHarmony. And uh, so hopefully you'll be hearing about that a lot. And, and again, just always reminding people to go adopt. And, and if you're looking for your lost pet too to be able to remember to come out to our shelter because it's possible they could be there. Okay and and the grand prize is a hundred thousand dollars for the, the shelter that um, finds forever home more forever homes than they did last year but there's mm -hmm. there's more prizes for other shelters too, right? There are. There's actually over $600,000 worth of grants that are available. So the prizes range from $1,000, like you mentioned, all the way up to $100,000. One of the biggies that we're really going to be looking at is for a community engagement award. And we feel like we have a good shot at that because we have such a great community yeah. who already supports us so much. Sure. Um, and then we also are going to be asking the community to vote for us um, on Facebook at the end of August. And that's to help us win that award too. Okay, well, mm -hmm. well, we'll talk about that in August then. Great, great. Um, and for this for this contest, this $100,000 challenge, mm -hmm. how can folks help you guys achieve that? Great, great question. You know, there's gonna be a lot of different ways. We'll have posters. So if for some reason, you, you know, you may be a business owner or have a neighbor who's a business owner, you can download those from our website. You can come in and adopt, the obvious thing, right? Um, you can spread the word. So you can become a friend on our Facebook page and you can share all of the posts that we'll be uh, sharing this summer about all the, the featured pets that we have up for adoption. So it's pretty simple. It's just for us to try to be able to network to even more people than ever before. That's great, and mm -hmm. and one of the ways uh, you guys network uh, for for lost pets is through pet licensing, right? Absolutely, that's a huge part of what we do, and and very very important. So it's it's a great time of year to remind people to license because you are typically out and about more with your dog, uh, especially, and so you know there's a greater chance that things can happen. And if you have that license tag on them, then the chances increase a lot that you're going to be able to reconnect with them very quickly. Sure, and there's a, a good reminder coming up in the uh, June edition of Looking at Lakewood, uh, an insert about uh, more information about pet licensing. So folks can uh, look for this in the, in the June edition of Looking at Lakewood. Thanks so much for uh, coming in, Jennifer, and, and talking to us about all this. Thanks for having us. Again, if you need any more information about Foothills Animal Shelter or pet licensing or the $100,000 challenge, you can go to their website at foothillsanimalshelter.org. Lakewood's Heritage, Culture, and the Arts will host Inspire Arts Week from Wednesday, June 4th to Saturday, June 14th. More than 30 free and discounted events will be presented by 17 art and cultural organizations throughout the city. A number of free events are part of this year's lineup, including Lakewood Symphony's open rehearsal at 7.30 p.m. on Wednesday, June 4th at the Lakewood Cultural Center. The 40 West Arts Rolling Route 40, the Hubcaps Art Exhibit, which opens on Friday, June 6th, and celebrates Colfax's storied past as the main drag, and the city's annual Rock and Block Party from 5 to 11 p.m. on June 14th at the Lakewood Heritage Center. Two new galleries are part of Inspire and the Lakewood scene this year, and they are located in Belmar's Block 7 Art District. Diagnosis Art invites you to a free grand opening from 6 to 9 p.m. on Friday, June 6th, where you can enjoy free gifts, entertainment, and refreshments. Valkyrie Gallery and Studio provides an opportunity to create in the gallery from 5 to 8.30 p.m. on Thursday, June 12th. And you can stop by Belmar Block 7 for the free art walk of all nine galleries in Belmar from 6 to 9 p.m. on Friday, June 6th. For a complete listing of events and to purchase tickets, visit lakewood.org forward slash inspire or visit the websites of the participating organizations. The Lakewood Cultural Center has just released its 2014-2015 calendar and there's a lot of world-class talent coming to town. The popular 8-pack subscription returns for the season and is on sale now for as low as $146. To check out a list of performances and to buy tickets, visit lakewood.org forward slash LCCP8. It's that time of the year again for Denver Water to enforce its annual summer watering rules. Be sure you know the rules, which include water during cooler times of the day. Lawn watering is not allowed between 10 a.m. and 6 p.m. Water no more than three days per week and repair leaking sprinkler systems within 10 days. For more information on summer watering rules, visit lakewood.org forward slash save water or contact your local water provider. 
If you're looking for something to do with the family later this month, why not head to the trails and volunteer? Lakewood and the Colorado Mountain Bike Association are looking for volunteers for a volunteer trail project at William Frederick Hayden Park on Green Mountain on May 31st. The project is geared toward the entire family with fun and educational activities for the kids while parents work on the trail. A light breakfast and lunch will be provided. You can register at lakewood.org forward slash BCLP. Volunteers serving Lakewood's heritage, culture and the arts were recently honored for providing thousands of hours of service to their fellow residents at Lakewood's annual recognition event. At the event, 68 volunteers were honored for their time and commitment to the division and five specific awards were given. Sharon Spicer received the Rookie of the Year Award. Carol Lally received the Lakewood Cultural Center Site Award. Michael Bowe received the Washington Heights Arts Center Site Award. John Hackett received the Lakewood Heritage Center Site Award and Ann Johnson received the Maxine Barnes Award. In 2013, more than 200 volunteers logged more than 13,760 hours with an estimated value of $304,646 of service at performances, festivals, classes, and other events. Are you interested in volunteering? Volunteers are needed to assist with the ticket taking and guest relations at the Sounds Exciting Summer Concert Series and in daily operations of the museum store. To become a volunteer, you can visit lakewood.org forward slash volunteer or contact Carla Gron at 303-987-7868 or K-A-R-G-R-A -R at lakewood.org. The Hispanic Chamber of Commerce of Metro Denver named the head of Lakewood's largest private employer, Businessman of the Year. David Perez is president and chief executive officer of Trumo BCT, a global leader in blood component and blood related technologies, and is currently building its global headquarters at its Lakewood campus to house all of its U.S. employees. You can learn more about Trumo BCT by watching the latest edition of Spotlight on Lakewood on our YouTube channel at youtube.com forward slash Lakewood 8. Congratulations to David. More than a dozen Jeffco High Schools topped two prestigious lists that recognize educational excellence. The schools, including Lakewood High School, made the U.S. News and World Report's Best High Schools list. Lakewood High School also made the Washington Post's America's Most Challenging High Schools in Colorado. Congratulations to them. Residents have a great chance each month to meet with their city council members to provide their thoughts and ideas about the city, discuss neighborhood happenings, and learn about the issues that are on city council's agenda. All the city council members have informal, casual meetings with residents that are often referred to as ward meetings. Sign up to receive email alerts about the upcoming meeting in your area of the city by visiting lakewood.org forward slash city council. Click on the ward you live in to subscribe to the email alert. If you don't know which ward you live in, visit lakewood.org forward slash ward map. That's it for this edition of City C News. Stay up to date on the latest Lakewood news and events at lakewood.org forward slash stay informed. I'm Jonathan Kirsch. Thanks for watching.